the library collection is a library that's used almost in its entirety. There aren't too many things we put away and don't let anybody ever see. I'm Barbara Rhodes and I'm the uh, conservator for the library. A big part of my work is trying to keep the library collection in a usable shape for the researchers. The books in this collection of, of illustrations sort of run the gamut from the very earliest to some fairly modern types of illustration processes. We start out with woodcut, which was done on the end grain of a piece of very fine-grained wood like boxwood. It actually started out as a uh, textile printing method and was adapted by book illustrators. You could actually get very fine detail with woodcut, but in the early years of, of printing, they were relying on the accounts of sailors and travelers and probably whatever sketches these people brought back with them. So in many cases, I think they let their fancy go a little bit. It probably helped to sell the book. Engraving, which was the, the next step, that was done on metal plates, usually copper, and the lines were inscribed into it or incised with a, a special tool called a graver or a burin, and the ink would be run over the plate into the lines that were engraved, and then they'd wipe off the excess, and then they would put a, a dampened piece of paper on it and run a roller over it with uh, great pressure to bring the ink out of the, the lines and onto the paper and you could get incredibly fine detail you know, with this method. So it was, it was very popular for quite a long time. And then the next thing to develop was lithography, which was invented at the very end of the uh, 18th century. This is a, a piece of lithographic stone. It is a, a very fine-grained limestone. By about the 1820s or so, you start to see black and white lithographs in books. And then later in the century, they developed a process called chromolithography, which was printing in color. And that involved uh, multiple stones, actually. You had to have one stone for each color that you were printing. And later they developed a three color process so that you only needed three stones plus your black. There was uh, yellow, cyan, and magenta. And those mixed together, they will actually, in layers, make up the colors on the actual print. There are artists who work with the scientists in the museum who, who have um, used our collections and, and will come and look at the ways that things have been portrayed. They're valuable as objects in themselves, but the information they contain is why we really have them. 